Today is Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. It is day 344 of web development, and today I'm going to be working on backend again. Um, I'm going to be trying to work with virtual environments and try to set, th set things up, basically, on my computer. And I was actually watching a video this morning that I think pretty um, it, it did a pretty good job in explaining virtual environments, and it was kind of easy to follow. So I'm going to pull it up, and then I'm going to see if I could kind of follow it again and try to set up my virtual environment. I did successfully create one yesterday, but I don't think I was in the right mindset. I was just so super frustrated with what happened yesterday. It was so stressful. Um, and I don't think I really got it, you know, so I'm going to do, I'm going to re, I'm gonna restart today, okay, I'm going to restart today, and, um, I'm going to try to speak slowly, because I can't even speak right now, um, right, so, yeah, so let me open up my command prompt, alright, um, Where's my stuff? Okay, here's a video. So just open that up. Just kind of want to see the part that he goes here. So did that already. Did that already. I just need to see if he exits out of that. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that's what I needed. So apparently here, but for me, hold on, Python. I thought I had to do capital Python, whatever. Okay, let me exit out. All right, so Python and then M for module, module, whatever. And then V, E and V for virtual environment. And then the name of my virtual environment, I'm going to call it um, env1, and then let me see, um, all right, and then at that point, I just hit enter, and then it's going to go and create my virtual environment, <sighs> I'm just going to wait 5,000 hours. Let's see what he says after. the TMP. Anyway, is this thing going to load or how long is it going to take? Oh, it's because I never even clicked enter properly. That's great. Alright, so I'll, I'll pause when this thing decides to figure itself out. Alright, so um, at this point, right, it should pop up my command line thingy again. I would do dir for directory, and then I should find it somewhere here. Um, what did I call it again? Um, env1. So it should be somewhere here. There we go. It's right here, env1. All right. But that is... Let me go here. Go to my C drives. Where should I find env1? Hmm. Okay, well that does that. I'm just going to... I think I have to activate it now something with scripts. I don't even know. 
it was like script something 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 okay so it's the name so it's env1 um and then what does it say scripts activate so scripts activate all right and then click enter perfect oh my god this is beautiful okay so at this point i am in my virtual environment number one and i called it env1 stands for environment one um so i believe that if i go here and just do python i can open up python in there and then i can pip install let's say pandas pip install oh you know what Ugh. Well, it has to be something. What is it then? It's Python pip install class. What do you mean invalid syntax? Like. rude interesting so hold on did it pull it up no but it's still working out it's probably gonna give me nothing um i'm just why 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 does this okay it's happening again calm down okay so i just i'm gonna figure this out i'm gonna figure this out i did activate the virtual environment um i went into python um let's see is very helpful we can see that we our command prompt has changed to the name of our virtual environment great now if we enter python this is within the virtual environment so let us i'll come i'll come out of here let's do an install close that up. right let's do a pip install then. oh i'm so confused then. wait so install it so i don't do it so I have to do it outside of Python? Question mark. Hold on, let me exit. All right, I'm still in the virtual environment, and then I can pip install Flask. Oh my God! Literally, what took three hours yesterday, I figured it out thanks to this guy and also god thank you god i literally prayed before doing this i was like mm, i'm going in with this with god by my side because if not him then who literally okay um that's perfect and so if i go to python now hold on um because i don't really know how to use flask so let me do exit and let me import another library like pip install pandas which i do know how to use so that i could actually see if it works um in python so go here and do um oh i'm so in love with this um okay so wait until my command line pops up again interesting so it installs numpy as well because i believe that numpy and pandas work together i guess or it's a dependency And then I do something, or <laughs> I guess we have to wait. But I'm going to try out and see if it actually works. Well, obviously, it imported. I was, like, questioning, like, why is it not in importing? So it turns out you have to do it inside your virtual environment, but you can't do it in the Python, um, I guess, in Python itself. Interesting. Alright, so I'll wait. 
Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to go to Python and then I can import pandas. Oh, that's how you do it because you're importing pandas, but you're doing it from. Oh, I'm so dumb, bro. You're doing it from a folder. That's why you can't do it because Python itself, it's like its own thing. You could think of it as like a direct. Okay, the directory is a whole thing. And then you have different folders. One is your virtual environment. In the virtual environment, you have Python, but then you also have different libraries. And so you, when, when you are in Python, you're importing those different libraries that are inside your virtual environment into, that, into Python. Wow, that's crazy. Um, so let's do data, pd dot data frame. Ooh, I haven't done like manual Python in a while. Usually, like it pops up, you know. I'm used to the shortcuts. Okay. Um, so the name of the column. So I'll have to do like a column. I don't even care. Column one. That's not how you spell column. right and then this and then a few not column one like well yeah column one and then the data inside like data i could just do value actually it doesn't even matter like one let's just get rid of those one two three four and then have that there and then i believe i don't have to put a semi not a semicolon a colon there right and now if i print out i don't think that's gonna work because in google colab it does oh my god it does work here that's interesting oh my god see oh my god i'm so excited that's beautiful oh god is good thank you god so column one so you can see that i printed out my data and you can see that i printed out column one well it printed out actually the entire data frame if there was more columns it print out it would print out every other column not every other, all the columns. Um, so that's incredible. So I just want to see how it looks like though in files. Like, here we go. This is my um, um, environment one. So if I click on this, it has my scripts and it has Flask, which I installed. Um, it has my activate, which is so interesting. Wow. Python, Python, pip. And it has my Python. Um, what's lib? Site packages. Pandas. Isn't that beautiful? And it has my init.py. Wow, that's beautiful. So I have pandas. Wow, this is beautiful. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, now let's go back. I just want to, what's the path? This is the path. Interesting. Oh, where's the location though? Can I open it up here? How do I, I know it's in Windows C, but where? Interesting. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Wow, that's amazing. And so now in order to de- Okay, so now I think the whole point is if I exit out of this now um, and I go to Python over here and I import pandas, it should give me an error because I didn't import py um, pandas in the global- Unless I did, did I? I don't know. Did I install pandas there too? I don't think it would work. pd dot data frame. Ugh, column, column, one, two, three, four, that's why, okay, it doesn't even matter, okay, hello, and then, there we go, oh, it's because I did, oh, that sucks, pandas as PD. On there. Oh, come on. Yeah. 
Interesting. Oh, it's because I didn't deactivate. I'm so dumb. Oh, why am I like this? Okay, even if I exit out of it, I'm still going to be inside my virtual environment of environment one. And so in order to deactivate it, I think I'll do the same thing. It's um, environment one, scripts, and then deactivate. Is that how you spell it? Deactivate, I think. And so now you can see that I'm out of my virtual environment one because it's not there anymore over here in the command line. Um, and then if I click on Python, it's still going to work. But if I import pandas, it's going to give me an error because I don't have pandas from, um, unless, are you serious right now? If it works, I'm going to cry. Data, hold on. Um, import pandas as PD. What if I import flask? Really? Import pandas as PD. And I do the same thing. But why does it work though? I'm outside of the environment. Did I spell deactivate wrong? Well, I didn't, it's not spelled wrong. So hold on. Um, let me exit out of here. Oh my God. Um, what am I doing again? Environment one. Um, Activate. See, it's there. So that should work. Um. Oh, I'm so tired. Okay. Um. But then, if I deactivate it, then panda shouldn't work because I didn't. What? What the heck is going on? Well, I didn't even finish writing. Really. Are you, can you literally give me a second to finish writing them? Scripts and then deactivate. Literally, the day that I learned how to spell is the day that pig will fly. Okay, scripts, deac deactivate, thank you. Now if I go to Python and I import panels as pd. Oh, let me close out of the command prompt, and then let me try doing that again. Really? Really? Really, really, really? So rude. Hold on. Okay, so it's not... I don't know. I mean, it is working, but it's also not... I mean, it's working. That's what I wanted, but why? What if I try another library? Hold on, let me do... Um, packages, index, Python. I think it's called Python. Yeah, it's Python. Um, 384,000? No way! Last time I checked it was 100 something. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, okay, one that's not known. Maybe this. I don't know, I'll just take the first one. So what do you, how do I call it? Oh, pip install pen test. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, so let me close out of this. Where's my command prompt? Excuse you, what is this? What is going on? Like, can you just do what I tell you? Command prompt, please. Thank you. All right, so if I go to Python, right? And I, hold on, let me think. Pip install pen. Okay, let me think. When I want to install a package, I have to do it outside, but in the same virtual environment, but outside of Python. But then if I do it down here, wouldn't it install pen test here too? Oh, right. So, okay, if I do import pen test, that should give me an error, right? Because there is no module named pen test, right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have my virtual environment, right, nv1. So I'm going to go to scripts and I'm going to just activate it. What now, what now? nv1. Oh, 
Uh, let's see, I have to exit out of it. Duh. Okay, NV1 scripts. No, let me finish writing. Okay, now that's activated, I am going to pip. Actually, just have it here. Pip install pen test, and it should install, right? Okay, so we'll wait. So notice though, notice that I did import pen test in the global like local python and it didn't work because i didn't right i didn't have pen test and notice that i'm importing it inside my virtual environment so it shouldn't even if i do it again again if i imp try to import it in my like normal python outside of the virtual environment it shouldn't work it should not work so i'm going to deactivate this now so i'm going to do nv1 scripts what the day i learn how to spell Okay, and if I go to Python here and I import pen test, it shouldn't work. But if it works, then something's wrong. Okay, perfect. That's good. That's perfect. But if I go back, okay, let me exit out of Python. And I go back to scripts and I activate it. Um, What was I doing again? Oh, if I go to Python and I import pen test, it should work, right? Because I, okay, great. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy. So that must mean that I actually, oh, because I did download Python yesterday. Yeah, and I did Flask too. Because here's the thing. I, um, um, I think yesterday I downloaded Python, not downloaded, installed Python, not Python, Pandas, Pandas and um, Flask on the local. So maybe that's why. But, he, okay, I just wanted to make sure that I'm good, right? Because, essentially, a virtual environment is kind of like a folder, right? So, the versions and the packages that I'm using for my project, for that specific project, are only going to be in that folder and shouldn't be, like, used in the um, system, uh, Pyth Python system. How do you call it? Like, the OS system? Whatever. Um... So yeah, it works. So that's, this is good. This is good. Now, how do I delete everything? How do I delete a virtual environment? Let me just create one more. The one I'm actually going to use for VS Code. Um, so let me exit out of everything and then I'll go to virtual environment one, um, scripts, and then deactivate because I don't want to use it anymore. Oh my god, there's a deer! Excuse me, I'm gonna have to pause. I have to look at the deer right now. Alright, so we have to take a quick break. I have to show you the deer that I just saw. So I made a video and I uploaded it to Google Drive so we could see it together because it's so cute! It was so cute! It was so sweet! Oh my god, I wanna hug one. I literally wanna hug one. Okay, so let me open it up. Hopefully I can see it. So cute. Oh. <laughs> I'm literally in love. Oh, I just love animals. They're so beautiful. Like, God literally made them. Like, the way... Oh, it's so unique. It's just so beautiful. Like, let's just watch it again. I'm sorry. It's so cute. It's so cute. Oh, my God. Look at that. What a cutie. Oh, God bless it. It's so cute. Okay. Um. Anyway, back to work. So, okay, so I was going to deactivate. Deactivate. Did I spell it right? Okay, good. So now, if I want to create a new virtual environment, um, I don't know. It was Python and then M and then NV. Let's NV2. Was that it? No module and V2. So M. So do I have to go to Python? I don't remember. Was it Python? No, that wouldn't make sense. Let me exit out of here. It was M and V2. Is that right? Because we're trying to look. What was it then? Let's go back. Where is my stuff?
Oh, V E N V. I forgot that little part. Okay, so it's Python M virtual environment, and then I'm going to name it, and then that should be that. And we wait a few seconds. So it's Python and then module virtual environment 2. Okay. Okay, so that's good. And it's activated. I have to do nb2 scripts. Um, activate. And notice that if I do, right, if I go into Python here and I import, let's say, pen test, it's not going to work because I don't have pen test um, installed. I only did that for environment number one, but this is environment number two. But if I exit out of here, um, I'm still in my environment too, but then I can do pip install pen test and it's going to install pen test in environment number two, right? And then now if I go into Python in environment number two and I do import pen test, it should work now. As you can see, there's no error, so that means it's going to work. All right, um, so again, I just wanted to make sure that I remember, so exit, so this is just me practicing at this moment. So exit, and then, what am I doing again? Okay, exit, and then I want to deactivate environment two, so I do the name of the environment, so environment two, scripts, and then deactivate. Okay, so now I'm back to my normal local system all right so what if i want to delete an environment okay just real quick again so i do python m and then virtual environment the name of your virtual environment and then i click enter and it should create my virtual environment okay just want to make sure i remember that um okay pip install works only outside of python in your virtual environment and then what else am I forgetting? Okay, I want to know how to delete an inver a virtual environment. Takes a few seconds, it goes off and it will create the virtual environment for us. There's no feedback. I'll come out of my folder. We're in this go pip pip install there and, and set up tools. Okay, so we've got our environments with our install minus r requirements there you go and then that will go off and it will install all of the packages that are in the pip requirements list so if we do what is it pip list you'll see all of those in there great okay, security that you keep your packages up this list of installed packages into one Let's do another pip install to get some extra packages in. We'll do requests as well. Off that goes to install it. Fine, clear that off. So we're in the environment. And if we want to take, we want to see the packages that we've got installed, we can do a pip. Interesting, so let me do that then. Um. So let me activate environment number one. So I'll do nv env1 scripts activate and then I'll do a pip install list. Could not find a version that satisfies the requirement list. From versions, none. No matching distribution found for this. Interesting. You sure about that?
Okay, how about I do environment one scripts deactivate and then I'll do environment two scripts activate and then pip install list. Interesting. Interesting. What if I do Python and I do pip install list? It's not going to work, right? Okay. So then why shall it not work? Pip. Oh, wow. it's pip list. Why am I dumb, bro? Horrible, sorry. Okay, exit and do pip list. Okay, perfect. So I have pen test, I have pip, setup tools, whatever. And if I go to, okay, so let me do environment two scripts deactivate to get out of there. And then do environment one scripts activate. And then I'll go here and do pip list to see it should be pandas it should be flask right flask um pandas and then i think with pandas comes like numpy and all the other ones um and then i also did pen test here um perfect and so now that's a new trick i love that i love that okay let's look at the more of the video it lists so that's all the packages that we've got in our environment Okay, so you can see key ring that I put in and we've got requests and some others came in through um, as part of the request install. Now what if we want to move this list of installed packages into our new virtual environment dash two, we can go pip freeze. into a requirements.txt file so this will create the the text file for us with the list of the pip packages i'll show you the dir okay so there's our requirements and if we do what is it more requirements you can actually see the list so this is the list and also it's the level so it's the version um, that we have of each one of our packages that's really important for security that you keep your packages up to date. Okay, so to move this into our new virtual environment, we deactivate this one and we do the activation of two, of course. Let's activate that and we can do a pip. install minus r requirements there you go Interesting. and then that will go off and it will install all of the packages that are in the pit requirements list wait but then why did we have to why can't it... okay so sure so mm, it's giving question mark okay so freeze what is pip pip right exactly the differences <laughs> um when you are using since when since when am i using it you can specify requirements oh a virtual environment i'm so dumb virtual environment you can specify requirement.txt file to install all the dependencies a typical usage is pip install and then our requirements okay the package needs to be a specific format for pip to understand which is whatever that is yeah sure this is oh the the library the module and then the version got it this is the requirements format and so it's telling okay install those requirements interesting okay yeah like literally all right what is um r and command line no so smart um dash r in command line command prompt all right 
So, um, what does it mean? Recursive, remove directories and their contents recursive. Huh? That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense because I'm adding a new file, so. Recursive option. It will recursively remove directories and their contents. Does it mean take? Does it mean to take it from somewhere and then move it to back? Question mark. Move it to somewhere else. Wait, what did I even see? Or dash two, we can go pip freeze. Oh, whatever. Um, okay, so I guess we can do that. So, if I go back to, this is for um, my environment one, and then this is for my environment two. So let's say from environment one, I want all of these to basically show up here. So what he's saying is that I have to do, okay, I have to do, I have to create a no i have to create a new file called requirements dot text txt sorry um let me just make sure pip okay pip freeze apparently right but then so it's pip freeze the pip freeze makes I don't even know. Pip freeze and then requirements. Dot text. Okay. So then at that point, I deactivate this one. And then I'm going to do environment one. No, sorry. Environment two. Um, scripts activate and then I'll do pip I think I install requirements or something let me see what he does text file and if we do so there's our requirements you can actually see the list so this is the list and also it's the level so it's the version um, that we had of each one of our packages that's really important for security that you keep your packages up to date. Okay, so to move this into our new version, you can do still, and then that. Oh, that's where I saw the R. Um, so I guess it's pip install, and then the R, which I guess removes or takes out the stuff from the requirements.txt file. And so if I were to do um, pip install, hold on, where did my stuff go? Okay, so at this point, if I were to do pip list again for environment two, it should not only give me these, but it should also give me all of these now, apparently, according to him. So, um, but I also wanted to see, he also used the more statement. But real quick, I need more information on that R. Recursive, oh, it reads. That makes sense. It reads or removes. Okay, it makes sense to read all files under each directory recursively, following symbolic links only if they're in the command line. Recursive recursion occurs when a thing is defined in terms of itself or of its type. Recursion is the use of variety of disciplines ranging from linguistics. That doesn't even make sense. Something that is recursive has to do with a procedure or rule that is repeated. Think of something that reoccurs over and over again, like those fun house mirrors that are able to present an infinite number of images. Huh? Okay, sure. So, what are the difference between what difference between one dash and two dashes? Can not find info? No.
recursive. It reads all files under each directory recursively, following symbolic links only if they are on the command line. This is equivalent to the deep first. Okay, so it stands for read. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say. It stands for read. So it's recursive. It reads all the files under each directory and it follows a symbolic link. And because we put in requirements.txt, it's going to follow that link. And so it's going to read, it's going to read, right, um, environment uh, two. What was it? Environment two. It doesn't matter. It's just going to read um, requirements.txt. So I guess that's that. Um, all right. So if I go to pip and pip list, it should print out all of those libraries now, including the ones like pen test that I downloaded here. So now it literally has, right, you can see the difference between um, environment to pip list after I did all that and over here, see? So it was just three and now it's all of these, right? It's three including all of the ones from um, environment one because I, um, I turned all of these into its own text file requirements and then in environment two, I made sure that, that those requirements were read, right, um, and installed. Okay, um, so that's pip freeze, um, pip freeze, I guess it pip freezes into requirements, and so does that make sense, is that a nice way to read it? setup tools. Oh, that's what it is. Right. Pip freeze for the requirements text on a machine and then later on a different machine and then you can do pip install read from frozen requirements.txt and you'll get the identical environment with the exact same dependencies installed as you had the original environment where you did. This is such a beautiful explanation. I'm going to screenshot. That's how beautiful it is. No, 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 no. Not the full screen mode. Rectangle. Thank you. Today is such a more successful day. <laughs> Let me just link. Caption, where's the, okay, caption, just paste that in there. Go here to caption, paste that in there. Um, I also want this resource. Okay, paste that in there, create bookmark. Okay, so now let me continue watching the video see what more he provides this is like the best video i've ever seen in my life let me just copy that put that in here that will go off and it will install all of the packages that are in the pit requirements list so if we do what is it pip list you'll see all of those in there great so as you can see that's the way if we deactivate that, that if I can type 
and then you go to well I'll show you actually this is the globe if you do a pip list for the global we've only got pip installed there and, and set up tools okay so we've got our environments with our different packages in and I've had I've got two environments and I've taken the packages from one environment and I've used uh, pip freeze and I've copied that across into the other environment it's all in the same directory so you don't have to move around folders to do this for this setup okay this is great but over time these environments can start to grow and they can mm -hmm. start to mushroom and then they can one. be very confusing and this happened to me recently when I was going to do a demo and on my main OS that I run my uh, my Mac I've got a lot of projects I've got a lot of virtual environments that I've been using that have different packages installed and just before I was going to do a live demo I realized that my virtual environment was actually in a different directory than where I was sat and I was thinking thank goodness I realized that and I was able to set it up because you have to activate those virtual environments before you can run your code that is in aligned to those packages you see so if you write some python that relies on these packages which you would normally have in these virtual environments you need to make sure that you've activated the right virtual environment before you run that code or it's going to tell you just like if you wanted to run something with uh, requests you know in a live demo doesn't look so great when you start having this and you're scrabbling around trying to remember which one of your many virtual environments that you're you need to activate so that's a problem but that but help is at hand so this is the next thing that we're gonna this is the fun wait let me think but I could just install it right then and there Final part that I'm going to go into well exit out of there there's scripts that you can install from pip which help you out here and this is the virtual environment wrapper which essentially will put all of your virtual environments in the same place and it will give you some command line um, tools that you can use to access and view which virtual environments you have and then to activate the the ones that you want to work on so it makes it that much easier when you're starting out you may think you know you probably go through these different grades where it's like I just install everything globally then when you get a bit more advanced you you would be thinking I'm gonna install different virtual environments and then when you move on and you've got all of these different virtual environments and they really start to get out of hand that's when you really need to turn to something to give to hold your hand with this stuff um, and that's where wrapper comes in so we're just jumping straight there and I'm recommending that you use something like wrapper to help you out here so what, now this is a package that you want to install globally okay not into a virtual environment because it sits for the whole OS so on global we do a pip install and it is virtual m wrapper and that's the name if you were going to use macOS or Linux for this, I believe. But, but this is Windows and it's slightly different. So we need to do dash win for this. It's a, it's a different project, okay? I can't, I'll show you it actually. Let's go here. Um, so it is, what did I say? Virtual and wrapper dash win. It should come up. There we are. Okay, so this is the project specifically for Windows for a virtual environment wrapper that makes it your life that much easier. Okay, so we are going to run the install. There we are, so I've installed virtual wrapper. Now I don't believe it will pick up the virtual environments that we've already created, so we'll just have to delete those off. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a couple of new virtual environments using oh, this. Oh, so this would be, if I were to do this, I want to download this now, right? Because, because if I don't, and if I download it later, it's going to be kind of useless for anything because I'm going to have all virtual environments set up and it's going to be like, okay, well, I can't use it to organize them. So like, what's the point? So I might as well just download it now.
this tool. And the way that we do that, so it's a different command, the way that we do that is make virtual, so it's mk virtual. Are you serious right now? If you hear that, you can see that that's to check that it's installed properly. And I should say this with Python store, this is what was failing with the install of Python store. It didn't have it in the path, etc. Um, here it is installed straight away and it's on the path, so it's all good. So it's mk virtual m make virtual m and then we give it a name, so I'll call it new VM. Let's give it a completely different name. So we'll call it I'll call it A. That's a new environment. It goes off and creates that, puts it in a centralized place, and it actually activates it for us. There you can see that uh, it does cool. it all in one go. So we don't have to do that activation, which is really nice. You know, it's like I said, it's kind of makes virtual environments that much more manageable for you. You deactivate them the same way. I don't need to do anything with that right now. But imagine then, oh, I, I should show you this actually. If you look, it's not in the folder where we installed them, when we ran them manually, when we manually created them with Python-M VM. It's in a centralized place. Why that's really useful is imagine if you were going to, which you will do with your projects, create something like a folder like code and then move into there. my call project and you think okay in my project I'm going to create a virtual environment I need to create a virtual environment now you can see the folder at the moment is empty if you were to create it via the Python dash M VM it would be created in here so if then you move somewhere else it would be stored in that directory so it may be like me with the demo it may be quite hard to find so if you instead what you do is you go virtual m and we can create a new one so what is it new vm b create that in the centralized place that's the base this is where they're going to be stored and again it's activated the environment for us great and they work exactly the same way with the pip install etc etc so pip install or key ring so oh, if I, oh my god so basically this is kind of like a different way of doing things but I don't know, I don't know, because I always like, you know, I always like doing it the normal way, but then, I don't know. Let me do it, let me do it, because if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. Um, okay, so he said, ow, something about wrapper, so let me go back over here. Wait, but first of all, before that, can I delete, delete, um, virtual, that's not useful, virtual environments. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go serve myself some strawberries. I need a snack. Yeah, never mind. I got cereal. Anyway, um, let me just read this. No, that's for ritual wrapper. I meant acceptable, whatever. You just do R?
Mm. So here they're making the virtual environment with a typo. Then they're in it. But then they are doing that to remove it, I guess. Hmm. All right, so to kind of go and exit out, right? But what just happened? Okay. So let me just um think right now. So I'm gonna go here. You can see that I have environment one, environment two. So I wanna delete them. So I'm gonna do RM. Or do I have to say virtual environment? Why do I have to do a slash? That doesn't even make sense. Am I sure? Is it using wrapper or? What? I mean, I just did um, Python. I literally just did Python, and then I did um, M. Yeah, this is what I mean. So let me do that. So RM R environment one. Really? Is nothing recognized here? How about R environment one? Rude. Where's my star? Where am I going? Over here. Well, it's not working, so...
And it's not even activated, is it? That's so mean. <coughs> I'm so confused. Mm, it's giving lost it's giving lost right now because it's still hold on let me see is it still there no dir oh my god oh no it's still there <laughs> that's great that's great isn't it um and this is where i'm stuck This is the point where it's it's starting. My head, like my eyes, actually hurt. Like they hurt so bad. Um, not even my eyes, like my eyeballs, like they hurt. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know what to do. That's great. Another one. Another one. Um. Let me use... Okay, that doesn't really matter. It's not the point. I just wanted to see if I could, but I guess not. I just want to see the wrapper thingy. And then you go to... Well, I'll show you actually. This is the globe. If you do a pip list for the global, we've only got pip installed there and, and set up tools. Okay, so we've got our environments with our different packages in, and I've had... I've got two environments, and I've taken... The packages from one environment and I've used uh, pip freeze and I've copied that across into the other environment it's all in the same directory when I would have different packages to, to make sure something with uh, requests you know in a live demo doesn't look so great when you start having this and you're scrabbling around trying to remember which one of your many virtual environments 
that you're you need to activate so that's a problem but there but help is at hand so this is the next thing that we're going to this is the final part that i'm going to go into well exit out of there there's scripts that you can install from pip which help you out here and this is the virtual environment wrapper which essentially will put all of your virtual environments in the same place and it will give you some command line um, tools that you can use to access and view which virtual environments you have and then to activate the, the ones that you want to work on. So it makes it that much easier. When you're starting out, you may think, you know, you probably go through these different grades where it's like, I just install everything globally. Then when you get a bit more advanced, you you would be thinking, I'm going to install different virtual environments. And then when you move on, and you've got all of these different virtual environments, and they really start to get out of hand. That's when you really need to turn to something to give to hold your hand with this stuff. Um, and that's where wrapper comes in. So we're just jumping straight there. And I'm recommending that you use something like wrapper to help you out here so what now this is a package that you want to install globally okay not into a virtual environment because it sits for the whole os so on global we do a pip install and it is virtual m wrapper and that's the name if you were going to use macOS or Linux for this, I believe. But, but this is Windows and it's slightly different. So we need to do dash win for this. It's a, it's a <sighs> okay. What am I doing again? Clip and star. Virtual. And the wrapper when <clears throat> all right, so that's global, and then now I can see my pip list here, and I should include virtual wrapper right there. Perfect. Um Okay, so, oh look, SQL, oh, that was from yesterday. All right, what am I doing again? I forgot. I literally forgot what I was doing. Oh, okay, I was learning how to, okay, yeah, yeah, I knew that, okay, go back. It's a different win, particularly for wind. Okay, so we are going to run the install wrapper now i don't believe it will pick up the virtual environments that we've already created so we'll just have to delete those off but for now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a couple of new virtual environments using this tool all and right so before that i just kind of read it right i what wow i can't speak i want to write some notes because there's two different versions here so let's do with Python and then with vir virtual wrapper. So let's do heading two, or actually, I'll do a toggle. No, a toggle. So to create a virtual environment is one thing to um to create a virtual environment to activate to deactivate and then to see um packages installed to install packages and then there's another one which is to to write packages into requirements text file so that um and then
from one virtual environment. Let me just shorthand that. Um, write packages into requirements on Tesla for one virtual environment. Um, and then install or like automatically install all packages from that file into environment into another virtual environment which is something that to do okay so with python you create a virtual environment by doing python i believe and then module and then v and v and then name um insert name of virtual environment without brackets all right so let me do that to activate it you do um the name of virtual environment um and then you do scripts and then activate and to deactivate you do the same but it's just deactivate and then hold on I wanted to make sure I did install wrapper right globally pip install virtual wrapper I'll just copy that real quick um hold on it's a uh, environment I still have it then delete it okay so there yeah so that's how you do that so let's make sure to see packages installed I just do pip list to install packages um just do pip install package name um and then i have to make sure this is only when um not in python but in virtual environment so make sure other words make sure you exit right out of Python, just in case. And then the way we write packages into a requirements text file is we do freeze, you know, we do pip freeze, and then we go here, and then we do our, the name of our file, requirements.txt, and so that, what that does, it's, it takes, oh, interesting, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, oops, spelled that wrong. I spelled that wrong. Oh, there we go, which is different between pip list. So pip freeze. <sighs> Interesting. Okay, so pip freeze is the same thing as pip list, except that it's formatted in a way that can be written into a text file which is useful when you want to write it into a text file and later um, in another virtual environment like I just did right install the same packages from the previous in virtual environment into that one you could do it by just writing into writing um, the pip freeze into a requirement text file in this environment and then in the other environment just um, doing pip install and then I would assume you would do minus r right and then you would you would do like um, minus r and then the name of the file which is requirements.txt okay so let me do that so then I would do pip install and then r to as in I think it's either to to read or to remove to read or to remove from um 
requirements.txt. So this is to write packages into requirements.txt file. This is to um, install all packages from that file. Um, once you write, you made it a file, right? So I believe that's what that is. I did delete it though, didn't I? Yes, I did. All right, so I'm gonna start again though, because um, I wanna, how do I delete packages though? How to delete packages from virtual environment. Okay, so that's what I'll do. So I'll do pip uninstall package name. So I'll go to environment one and I'm going to go to scripts and activate. And then I'll go here and I'll try to see pip list. And um, Jesus Christ, do I have to really do this? Pip uninstall. Can I just uninstall all of them, please? Um, flask. Does that work? Yes, it does. Okay, then pip. Plus, so shouldn't be there anymore. There we go. Um, okay, I need there to be a faster way. So how, if I want to uninstall all of them, how do I do that? Uninstall dependency package. Oh, look, to get a list of installed packages under versions, which can be later used with our file to install a list of packages. That is literally the beautiful list thing I've ever read. Just kidding, the Bible is, but then second to that is this. <laughs> okay, let me just put the citation there. I'll go put that there. Beautiful. Um, do not clean up the directories, do not install dependencies, couldn't tell me that before. Um, okay, no. how to remove all packages in virtual environment in Python. And let me just take the link here, just cite the source, caption, paste that in the caption, okay. Pip uninstall. Remove requirements. Oh, could have told me that before. Where is my command prompt? Obviously not there, sorry. Okay, back up here. So pip uninstall remove requirements.txt. Found existing installation. Okay, so pip. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, so I just have to click yes that many times. There we go. So now if I do pip list, it should print out basically nothing, right? Besides the basics, right? Pip and set of tools which are global. Um, So that's great. Um, perfect, actually. That's really cool. So, but that wouldn't work if I didn't, I don't think it would work. Okay, so that only worked because I had it as requirements.txt. But I don't think it would work because, okay, let me go here and deactivate. I don't think that would work in environment two because I don't think in environment two, I have a requirements. Um, file. I don't think I have one, so I think I would have to do pip uninstall pip freeze, but that wouldn't work out because I don't think that would work out. Interesting, so it does work. Ah, look at me using intuition. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Wow, so it does work. Great. Okay, nope. Okay, great. That's great. Um, access is denied. What do you mean? No. 
Access is annoyed for what? Okay, but still, I can still see the dependencies here. <gasps> Interesting. So it didn't work, but it did work. Only worked for one of them. Oh no. Oh, it only worked. <gasps> No hacking way, bro. It uninstalled pip. I can't do Python without pip. It's not- wait, it didn't uninstall, it's right there. Stop scaring me. I was like, uh, excuse me, how am I supposed to work this? Um, what am I doing again? Okay, so I guess I do have to do, um, so I have to do pip freeze and write it into a requirements.txt file. Right? And then now that I do that, I can probably do pip uninstall um requirements dot text if I spelled that right huh I'm so confused okay for this Huh? Hip freeze. Interesting. Is that not how he had it though? It's pip freeze. Right? Uh no, that's exactly what I wrote. And I don't need this. Cause that doesn't make sense, unless I do have to install, but it doesn't make sense. It's just not a good idea. So how about I do, but I can still do pip uninstall manually and uninstall, like, let's say, um, I have flask here, right? Yeah. So that works, but no, it doesn't really work. I mean, it does work, but like the thing I tried before doesn't, so I'm gonna have to find a new way. So, Interesting though, that, that's a very interesting thing. I could do pip uninstall our requirements.txt, but that only works if it's like a second environment in which I installed a, like packages from that um, requirements.txt file. Interesting. So maybe that's what I needed. A why? What's my command? Okay. <sighs> so maybe this. Still doesn't even work. Pip list. It's still there. Should work. Hmm. 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 There literally is. I'm literally telling it to go to that file. Oh, so it did work. Oh, so I was right. It's just that I needed to add it. I needed to add a Y. Yes, guys, I was right. <sighs> Uninstalling. Okay, let's see. Interesting. It doesn't ask me for permission either. So now let's look at the pip list. Hmm. 
And I should have practically nothing. Perfect. Now we clean that out. Oh, I literally love this. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm in love. All right. So this is to delete all packages. Okay, let me go back here. So, um, to delete, excuse you. All right, to delete package or to uninstall packages let's be fancy so to i'm gonna do a toggle to uninstall individual package really great and then is to, are you serious There's no way. There. And then to uninstall all packages. Um, yeah. So to uninstall all packages, I'm going to try to write it from memory. So it was um, pip uninstall r and then it was um the name of the package was it no it was requirements dot text and then a y right so that would make sense because um but before doing this though okay so hold on before doing the above you have to do the following which is doing pip freeze and writing it into a requirements dot text file what is it not spelled right requirements dot text file and what pip freeze does is um is the the packages the packages so we're basically saying okay take the packages um into a file and then we're saying okay i'm just gonna do what the Copy that. Okay, this is equal to that. The packages into file. So all packages into um, a text file. And then this is equal to um, uninstall. Um, all packages from this test file um but really it's more like uninstall read list of packages from text file and then all is more like it <laughs> uninstall right Read list of packages from text files. So run install these list of packages and then uninstall all of them. What does Y stand for? I'm assuming it's all or something. Oops, it's not gonna pop up anything. Okay, Y. Okay, let's do dash Y in command prompt. So assume yes, automatic yes to prompts. Oh, that's interesting. Wow. So it's not all. It's yes. That's why. I See, I mentioned that. I was like, oh, it's even um doing it all without asking me for permission so that's good which is good which is good it's good so would that work wait but i tried doing that though without the y and it didn't work so tell me how that's gonna work out oh, for me here how does that make sense um it doesn't even matter whatever it's okay um just doing my own research here let's see so 
have to do the following pip freeze requirements of text all packages into a text file um uninstall all packages from text file or we can think of it as or <laughs> um uninstall so let me just color code i love color coding so let's turn this to like um gray so all packages into oh, I can barely see it into text file so you know what it's mostly let me just delete this it's pretty much this and then this two steps so this right and then pip uninstall is equal to uninstall all packages from this text file um, or uninstall realist actually this is just much more better so pip uninstall so we're going to do another color like uh, blue uninstall blue and then well all packages read from this text file or removed from this text file so let me do something like yellow here and then I'll do something like yellow here. And then this is a text file. So I'll do gray. Nope, 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 nope. Gray. Just remove that for lack like, for clarity. Text file. Gray. Um, or to keep everything sane, I'll just do yellow here, this text file is yellow here, and um, turn this to something like, you know what, let me just restart. Whoa, okay, delete this, delete that. read from text file so pip uninstall is going to be gray and that's this where's my stuff gray we don't really need all because that's a given because this gives you all packages which is all of them. Pip freeze is all pack. Well, now this doesn't make sense. Hold up. So pip freeze is all packages into text file. Pip uninstall is uninstall. <laughs> um, packages read from this text file. So yellow, and then this could be I can barely see that. I'm literally, am I blind? Brown. That's what the R stands for. Okay, 
So pip uninstall is the same thing as uninstall. And then the basically anything that's read from this file. So from the text file, basically we don't need this. Uninstall, right? Pip uninstall my requirements. So uninstall anything read, everything read from everything read from the text file. There we go. That makes much more sense. Um, and then this, just to clarify, is, um, no, because that matches with this. Um, say yes <laughs> to everything. Is what the Y means. Okay, can I make this a wide page? There we go. All right, so that's to how to uninstall all packages. And if I want to do one package, I could just do pip uninstall and I'll do um, package name right to see packages pip list or pip freeze install packages not in python but in make sure you guys are in python pip install package name got that Right, packages into so you would do this in environment one and then you would do this in environment actually you know what it's B A and B environment A and then you would do this in environment B let me do do in environment A do in environment B I love how Never mind. All right, so I think I got everything. So that's with Python. Now I have to figure out how to do virtual wrapper. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? Um, so now I have to do all of this, figure out, learn all of this in virtual wrapper. Right. And I have to do this in the is it virtual environment or the normal environment? Let me see. He did that in the global environment. Let's go. Where's my stuff? Okay, where's my stuff? Where's my stuff. Do this in global environment. All right. All right, this just comes with pip, which is automatically installed. All right, create a virtual environment, activate. So I'm just going to delete this, delete all of this, delete this, delete this, delete this, delete this too, delete this too, delete that, delete this stuff, and then delete this, and then delete that okay so um i'll kind of walk through basically what he did here so let me go back so i think i already have it installed so let me just go command prompt i should probably pin this to taskbar put that up here all right, so, ew, what? Go away, go away, thank you. So right now I'm in global, so I just wanna see all the packages that I have installed. So I should have pips, set up tools, and then I should 
also have wrapper, which I don't see, so I guess I'm gonna have to do pip install virtual um, env wrapper win, but it should be there already, unless it doesn't. Okay, so now let me do pip install, not pip install, I meant pip list. Okay, beautiful. So, yeah, so there we go. Virtual um, in, uh, wrapper with its dependencies. So I'm assuming those are what those are. Um, and then I just want to check one thing. Um, virtual, okay, so after this. What? The way that we do that, so it's a different command. The way that we do that is make virtual, so it's mk virtual m. If you hear that, you can see that that's to check that it's installed properly. And I should say this with Python store, this is what was failing with the install of Python store. It didn't have it in the path, etc. Um, here it is installed straight away and it's on the path, so it's all good. Python, you can see that MK virtual env. If you hear that, you can see that that's to check. Well, what that do you name it? That it's installed properly. And I should say this with Python store, this is what was failing with the install of Python store, it didn't have it in the path, etc. Um, here it is installed straight away and it's on the path, so it's all good. So it's mk virtual env, make virtual env, and then we give it a name, so I'll call it oh. new vm. Let's give it a completely different name. So we'll call yeah, it, but I'll does call he it click a. enter or does he not click enter? I don't even know. Okay, let's go here, right? So now I have it installed, I'm going to do um make virtual environment and i'll call it environment three or a right a let me do environment a ends is not a directory creating okay so we'll wait for that to happen Okay, great. So it activates by itself. That's amazing. All right, so let me do screenshots. <laughs> um, so I put that in here. So just to virtual environment and then you insert the name of your virtual environment without brackets okay so that's done um that's easy activate um virtual environment wrapper activates by default once created um, but you can deactivate the same way that you deactivate here um, oh oh there is also another option or you could just say deactivate <laughs> so here or deactivate all right let's see what else that's a new environment. It goes off and creates that, puts it in a centralized place, and it actually activates it for us. There you can see that uh, it does it all in one go. So we don't have to do that activation, which is really nice. You know, it's like I said, it's kind of makes virtual environments that much more manageable for you. You deactivate them the same way. I don't need to do anything with that right now. But imagine then, oh, I, I should show you this actually. If you look, it's not in the folder where we installed them, when we ran them manually, when we manually created them with Python-M VM. It's in a centralized place. Why that's really useful is imagine if you were going to, which you will do with your projects, create something like a folder like code, and then move into there. So when you make a directory, 
I need to like, wait, let me think. So, wait, no, where's my command prompt? Not Netflix. Um, let me think. Um, try to think, try to think. Oh, the way that I make a directory. I don't know how to do that. So, apparently you do MK? Question mark? I don't even know. <sighs> Let me think. Because this is the part where he loses me. <laughs> he starts making directories and stuff. Um... You just search up a cd command. Also known as whatever that is, is a command line shell command used to change the current working directory in various operating systems. So in this case, wait, why did I get out of here? He does cd code, so he changes the directory um, to the code. Okay, that makes sense. And then my call project and you think okay in my project I'm going to create a virtual environment I need to create a virtual environment now you can see the folder at the moment is empty if you were to create it via the Python dash M VM it would be created in here so if then you move somewhere else it would be stored in that directory so it may be like me with the demo it may be quite hard to find so if you instead what you do is you go Did he just do cls okay what is it though like hello Oh, clearing. I could have told me that. Oh, so I could just do CLS. Cool. Oh, virtual M, and we can create a new one. So what is it? New VM B. Create that in the centralized place. That's the base. This is where they're going to be stored. And again, it's activated the environment for us. Great. And they work exactly the same way with the pip install, etc., etc. So pip install or key ring. Python import. There we are. Excellent. Right, but now if we look different from before.
creating a virtual environment and activating it, right? You don't even have to do anything for that. Um, deactivating it, you would do the same. Um, now, there's a new thing. So there's a toggle. There's seeing. Something you can't do with normal Python. So seeing or viewing. Let's be fancy. Viewing all virtual environments created with MK virtual environment. Okay. Um, only created. Um, so you do that. Let's do view. Um, you do that by doing work on apparently. Or, no, 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 you do, what did he say? Let's go back. That's how you switch. Um, well, yeah, work on. You could do, well, yeah, work on, I guess. Work on. And then switching. Switching between virtual environments without deactivating. Or activating you could do that by just doing work on and then insert name of virtual environment so I'm just gonna walk through all of these steps both with Python and with the virtual wrapper um, and I'll do such thing oh and then the only thing is the greatest thing actually is that I really want to figure out how to delete them. But apparently I can't delete them. So that's great. I could remove though. Um, no, it just doesn't make sense. Um, I think I like that. I like that. I don't even know. Deleting environments. Let me just close everything so I could be focused here. Oh, and also... Um, let's do like a little H3. I'll do tips or like quick commands that I learned today. I learned CLS, CLS which clears command prompt. So that's cool. Um, and then I think it says make directory, which makes a directory. Um, and then CD, um, it changes directory. So CD and the name of the directory. Okay, so this is just like general stuff. Um, but I'm wondering if this is just with um, virtual wrapper. Can I make a directory without that? Can I do like Okay, hold on, let me exit. No, I can deactivate. Okay, can I do like a directory here and call it um, directory one? Volume in drive C is Windows. Volume serial number, what is? what in the world is this? Oh, I have to make it. Really? Really? So, make directory. Directory one. So... Interesting. Okay, so that's not just a virtual wrapper thing. That's actually a whole thing. Okay, that's really cool actually. So it's like a folder, making a folder. And then you can just go from there. And then if I want to exit. Okay, that exits the whole thing because I'm right here. But that's really cool. Okay, so that's really cool. Alright, so I'm going to go take a break. I'm going to go get ramen noodles now. All right, so it's currently 6.30 p.m. Um, I didn't just eat ramen noodles, but I also um, went on a whole bike ride with a bike that broke. So that's great. Um, anyway, I'm back. I'm back. Um, what were we doing? I don't know what I was doing. I forgot. I think that... Where, what am I doing again? Okay, come on. Come on. Wow, I can't talk. I said command prompt, really. Um, I kind of want to, okay, so now I know the last thing I want to do, though, is I want to set up a virtual environment for my VS Code here. 
So I'm going to see if I could do this. Um, so I can do MK directory. Well, no, not really. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. MK directory. So make directory. And I'll call it, um, I'll do app. I'll do app. And then I'll change the directory to app. So now that I'm under app, I can make a, um, how do I make a folder? How do I make a folder? Look, why that's really, and you think, okay, in my, oh, well, I guess that's the folder. Um, so yeah, app, right? And then in app, what do I do again? So I'm going to do Python module, um, virtual environment. Oh, no, no, no. I'm going to do make, what was it again? Virtual environment. And then I'll call it. No, not this. Oh, yeah, this. Okay. And then I'll call it, what do I call it? Um, app. <laughs> app. App environment. Okay. And then it should activate it by default. Okay, perfect. So, at this point in time, I'm going to go to VS Code. And I am going to get out of here. I'm going to, let's see, get out of here, delete this. Um, can I delete this? No, okay, great. File, new text file. No, I meant new window or new file. Open file, open folder. Can we just delete, please? Um, new window. Okay. And then I'm going to go here, file, open folder. Well, not folder, but um, you know what? It's here. That's amazing. My app. Oh, this is where it is. It's in quick. I'm so confused. Where am I? I'm in Sarai Mante. Oh, am I in users? So Windows, and I go to users, and I go to Sarai Mante. That's where everything is. I was wondering. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so let me go to quick access. Um. Where is it now? Let me go back to Windows, uh, Users, Sarai Malte, and then my app. Over here is the folder that I want to add. Yes, I am the author of the folder. Like, hello. Alright, so in the app, I um, think I'm going to do Control Shift. Hold on, Control Shift P. I'm going to do Python Select Interpreter, and then I can select this interpreter, the app one. And now I have all of these beautiful babies. So pretty. App environment. Isn't that beautiful? Look. Oh my god. Virtual in an um, environment wrapper. And I can select that one. And now I have my whole thing going on here. And I can add a file. Call it main.py. Right? And then again. Hold on. Control shift P. Python select interpreter, and I do have that one going on, right? Right, okay, so if, hold on. It's not gonna work because 
If I open up the terminal. Um, I'll have to go... Hold on. What do I do again? Interesting, but if it's, um... Huh. Open install pandas. Okay, and I wait. That's why I found it weird. Over here, this is where this top, I'm sorry, bottom right corner, it says the uh, Python interpreter that I'm using. I was like, why is it not on the left? It's because it's in the right now. All right, so I'm installing pandas. Interesting. File. Import pandas SPD. Well, I'm telling you to install pandas. Pip install pandas. Unless I have to do it outside of Python. It's not even in Python. Already satisfied, so why doesn't it work? Import pandas as PD. <sighs> this is the issue. Um. Import pandas as pd module not found error. What if I change directory? No, because I don't want to change directory. How do I do this? If I exit, this is great because I'm already in there. So I guess I have to go to the command prompt over here and do pip install pandas. And it would do that there in the app environment. Oh, you know what's the issue? I'm so dumb. I'm only in the folder. I didn't activate, but then I don't know how to act. Wait, I'm so confused. I can't activate a virtual environment here. So with make, what if I do do it though? Can I do um app environment scripts? But it was a capital letter. Act. No. But it's here though, right? Like, oh, it's gonna take a long time. Is that why? It was working the other day. Alright, so now I can do pip list and see just double check if it's installed right it is so if I go back up here um, let's do new terminal now if I run it Let's see if it works. PD data frame. Um, column. Set that to a variable called data. And then set the data. Run that. 
Should it not output somewhere? I'm so confused. Where do I see it? Should it not be in the output? Or do I have to say print data? Oh, okay. But why doesn't it go to the output instead of the uh, terminal? So weird. It prints out in the terminal, but not the output. What? Yeah, I'm so confused. Oh, it's so nice. It tells you it's active. It's active. Wow. Python test log. Log main. I don't even have get. Python. So weird. So I guess it comes out of the terminal. Um, so if I run that, it comes out here. Oh, finally it works. See, it took me a whole day to figure this out, but it's fine. We figured things out. Yes, we do. Okay, that's, that's really exciting. So it turns out that I actually have to install any packages that I want through my command prompt. And then um, I can import it um, in here. Um, so that's great. So I think we're good. I think I know what I'm doing now. So I don't want to, I don't want any of this. So let me close this out, delete this. And then I'm just going to start um, again. And I think I'm going to do some folders. So I'm actually going to do that tomorrow because I think I've done enough for today. Um, I'll start with the actual, you know, video that I started with yesterday, um, now that I have everything set up, but yeah, um, and then I think I'm good. I think I figured it out, finally. So lots of notes here today. Um, and yeah, I think I'm just gonna, no, never mind. Alright, yeah, that's it for today. Um, so, did I close it out? Anyway, yeah, that's it for today. Bye.